What's up, Vikings fans? Welcome back to another edition of Viking Spin. I'm your host, Jason. And we're coming at you tonight with a uh, new episode here uh, regarding if the Vikings should consider trading for uh, Redskins' disgruntled left tackle, Trent Williams, uh, the seven-time Pro Bowler. Uh, he has made the Pro Bowl uh, in consecutive seasons, dating all the way back to 2012 and as recently as last season. Uh, so he's been a very consistent elite left tackle. Uh, you could say the best left tackle in the NFL. Um, and what kind of motivated me to take a second look at this because I've, I've, I've seen, there's, you know, there's been uh, videos put out uh, by others, um, you know, in uh, Vikings media, um, you know, about Trent Williams and, and considering uh, trading for him. A uh, good proposal uh, was was put out uh, by Andy Carlson. Uh, Realistic Randy's talking about it as well. Um, and I've kind of come up with my own proposal, uh, a little bit modified from what's been thrown out there, um, that I think would be suitable for the Vikings. Uh, but I wanted to talk about what, what sort of motivated me to take a second look at this first. Um, Today I was actually uh, out and uh, doing some shopping and I came across a magazine that has the, uh, the predictions for the upcoming season for the football teams. Um, you know, it accounts for all the draft picks and, and everything, so it's got the latest roster. Um, and it said, you know, the opinion was that the Vikings were good enough to uh, take back the North after adding uh, Gary Kubiak to the staff, switching to a system that's going to fit uh, the Vikings players uh, better than last year, having a more balanced offense. They, you know, they acknowledge the offensive line's been upgraded with the addition of Garrett Bradbury and Josh Klein, Brian O'Neill uh, going into his second season, but they still didn't think the offensive line was good enough to win the Super Bowl. Um, so, with that said, you know, you look at the Vikings offensive line and Riley Reef is a decent player, but, you know, can the Vikings improve on him if they were to get Trent Williams? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, Williams would definitely take the Vikings offensive line to the next step with, a, you know, providing an elite left tackle. Um, you know, considering a, a some of the pass rushers the Vikings face, you know, including Khalil Mack uh, twice a season, it sh certainly wouldn't be a bad idea. So, we look at how the Vikings could possibly make this happen. Now, Williams has said that he doesn't want to be with the Redskins going forward. So, obviously, you know, the Redskins are probably not going to get a first-round pick for him with teams knowing that. But they're still going to get a good haul because he's the best left tackle in the game, and it's a premium position in the NFL. So, if they do want to trade him... Um, you know, they can't come to, to an agreement with him, then the Vikings, I propose, should trade them Riley Reef, Laquan Treadwell, and a 2020 second round pick to try to get this deal done. Um, now, if you look at what the Vikings need to do from a cap perspective to make this work, uh, Trent Williams right now is counting 14 million roughly against the Redskins cap, but they would owe him 5 million uh, because the way they have it here, if he's traded, that's 5 million dead money. So the Vikings would have to absorb about 9 million of that. Um, the Vikings are said to have about a little over 600,000 in cap space right now. I go on over the caps website and they have the Vikings a little bit over a million. Uh, but I, I go there just to play around with the uh, the figures to do restructures uh, because obviously you know you know if, if you trade reef um, it's a, a little over five million savings about 5.1 million I believe uh, Laquan Treadwell is uh, 1.8 million savings so you're looking there at close to seven million in savings and you've got to absorb around nine million. Um, to get Trent Williams in. So what I propose the Vikings to do in that situation would be to 
restructure a couple more contracts like they did with Eric Hendricks. Uh, if they can save, let's say, $4 million a piece on the 2019 cap by doing Stefan Diggs and Daniil Hunter, they could spread those um, spread those cap hits out over the remainder of their contract so they really wouldn't be you know, mortgaging the future quote unquote too much. Those guys are assigned to deals that are long enough to uh, spread out the the money that you took from the cap hit this year and putting it into subsequent years. Because remember, these restructures are not pay cuts. You're going to pay them that money, but you're just restructuring the way that you're paying it to them. Um, and the Vikings do have those automatic uh, base salary to signing bonus conversions built into those two contracts. Those are two of the ones that they do have those in. So they could do that with Diggs and Hunter. Um, and if they were going to do this trade, then they should. Now, that would open up, you know, because they'd be around $2 million, uh, $2.5 million, or uh, $1.5 million short. Um, so if you give them another $8 million, um, you know, now you're you're six, you know, you're about six and a half above the cap, and that's plenty to account for when you have to, you know, do the whole uh, 53 man roster pl uh, plus the practice squad have a little bit for uh, in case of an injury or rollover for next year. So you've got all that accounted for if you do those two moves. You might even be able to create a little bit more space if you want to uh, by redoing Trent Williams' deal. Uh, to where you can get him, he's because he's looking for more guaranteed money um, in his deal. So you can guarantee him a little bit more money over the first couple of years in exchange for lowering the cap hit, and then um, you know have his higher hits in the in the latter years of the deal. Um, so the, you know the Vikings could look at doing something like that, and they wouldn't have to give up Kyle Rudolph, so they can keep their. Um, two tight end set advantage, which I think is going to be really important for them. Uh, so that's a way that I came up with doing it without uh, trading uh, anyone like Kyle Rudolph or Trey Waynes, where it's going to weaken another part of your team. So this way the Vikings would stay strong uh, at tight end and cornerback. Um, you know, they're upgrading the left tackle spot. They're getting rid of a player and Treadwell that they really don't need anymore. That's not in the team's future plans. Um, you know, they're, getting, they're giving wide receiver three reps right now to Jordan Taylor, Chad Beebe's in that mix. So um, I think the Vikings are, are ready to move on from Treadwell if they can. And this would be a way to do it where it helps out uh, in uh, getting a trade done and, and working things under the cap, uh, you know, as they would need to if they're to make a move like this, um, you know. And as far as the draft pick compensation, I think a 2022nd would do it. I wouldn't be opposed to throwing in a 2023rd, maybe doing a pick swap in 2021, like a third for a fifth. You know, Vikings give a third, Redskins give us a 2021 fifth, something along those lines. I think would be a deal that could make sense for both teams. You know, especially if the Redskins are getting to the point where, you know, Williams just wants out of there. Um, there's a myriad of reasons anywhere from he's not satisfied in in terms of the guaranteed money in the rest of his contract to he was upset the way they handled a medical procedure that he had recently. It's, apparently there was a growth on his head um, and it turned out to be, you know, it was non-cancerous and uh, just the way the thing was handled apparently upset him. I don't know the whole story. Um, the Redskins are kind of, of course, being coy with the story, uh, as they naturally would be. Uh, Williams hasn't really spoken in depth about what his grievances are, just that the fact that um, he has grievances and, and doesn't want to uh, report right now for their off-season program. Uh, it should get interesting with him when they're, it's approaching training camp, if he's still not in there. Um, you know, that I, I think the Redskins will probably have to deal with him. I would offer the Redskins 
the deal now if I were the Vikings because I would want to get Williams in there for training camp. Now, I, you know, I do understand that he would be familiar with this type of offense since it's similar. The Kubiak offense is similar to the uh, Shanahan offense that they've run out there in Washington. It's what Cousins knows. Cousins can obviously help him with any terminology translations to get him up to speed quickly. But you'd still want to have him in there for training camp and preseason so that he can get fully acclimated, get those reps with his new teammates, and just be ready to rock and roll for week one. You know, if this is something that, you know, the Redskins are going to drag out to the trade deadline in week eight, then it really, you know, I don't know if it makes sense to do something like that really late in the season. Um... You know, I would rather do it early and just have them from the get-go and have everything be, you know, a nice, easy, smooth transition here with them. But um, I think he would certainly be a massive upgrade uh, on the offensive line. It would make the Vikings a legitimate Super Bowl contender. You know, not just a, okay, they can make the playoffs and, you know, maybe win a game. Um, you know, now, now you're talking about a Super Bowl-quality team. And as far as the ramifications for what the Vikings are looking at going forward, uh, you might say, well, you know, if they take on Williams, they're going to take on another contract in the future. But, you know, you're looking at next year, you're probably going to be able to re-sign maybe one to two tops of the guys that you have coming up in Stephen Weatherly, Trey Waynes, Mackenzie Alexander, and Anthony Harris. Um you know, you can, you can, you might be able to get, you know, those guys in there anyways um, if you do a couple more restructures next season. You know, maybe Harrison Smith or Winball Joseph. Um, you know, we don't know what to, now. Maybe you can, will Griffin take another pay reduction? You know, do you do a, um, a extension with him as a Viking for life and he, cuts his cap hit in half next season. Kind of depends on how things go this season. You know, you're looking at guys like Xavier Rhodes. Um, you know, it's all going to depend on what happens, you know, with his performance. But there's ways to keep these guys, um, you know, for the future, to keep most of them in the fold in the future and still have Trent Williams because you're going to have to replace at least – you know, one or two of these guys, probably at least two of these guys um, next year in the draft. So if you don't take, you know, a lot of people were along the lines of thinking, well, if they kept Riley Reef, then this would be probably Reef's last season and they draft a left tackle. Well, then maybe instead of drafting a left tackle, then you're drafting a cornerback if you can't resign Waynes next year. And then maybe your next selection is, um, you know, another cornerback if you can't get Mackenzie Alexander back in here. Because you've got Mike Hughes is going to be ready to take the over for one of them. So even if you lost two of them, you could put Hughes in there uh, for, to replace one and then take another draft pick to replace the other. You know, so you know, it just depends on what direction you want to go as in, you know, what veteran do you want to have signed long term? Do you want to have Trent Williams signed long term? Who is a who's the best left tackle in the game, or do you want Trey Wayne signed long term, who is just a serviceable cornerback? You know, I'd rather be looking to the draft to replace Wayne's than having to, you know, put all the chips in on drafting a left tackle uh, because a lot of you know a lot of left tackles flame out, and who knows? I mean, you know, if the Vikings do well this season and get, you know, does that mean Gary Kubiak? Um, you know, gets an OC job next year and he takes Rick Dennison with him. And now all of a sudden you don't have that all-star offensive line kind of developmental coaching staff that you want, you know, when you're drafting a rookie left tackle. Now, if you've got Trent Williams, you can kind of absorb that blow. Um, grooming young defensive backs doesn't really concern me with Mike Zimmer on staff and you know, he's signed through 2020, so you've got him under contract next year, and he's got a great history of developing defensive backs. So I'm pretty confident that 
that uh, he'd be able to do that with a rookie. So, you know, those are my thoughts on it. Um, let me know what you guys think, um, you know, uh, about this uh, Trent Williams trade. Do you think they should do it? Uh, you know, what, do you, what kind of compensation do you think they should give up? You know, do you think they should not do it and just roll with the uh, roster of what they have? Let me know in the comments section. Don't forget to follow us. Uh, Viking Spin on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, I encourage others to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we're partnering with uh, websites like Purple PTSD and Viking Horn as well uh, for our content. So don't forget to check them out too. And we will see you next time. Take care.